Do you like to subscribe to your channel? Your videos are quite interesting and very informative, but I understand that you used a lot of evolutionary psychology to explain human behavior. So my question is, to what extent can they explain human behavior? Are there any limitations to this approach? How much of this is supported by science? Because without hard science, this information is no better than those bro science channels out there. If you watch my videos, you probably noticed that I talk a lot about biology and evolution. And the reason for that is because it's often the missing piece of the puzzle in our understanding of what's guiding human behavior. Of course, it's not the only thing. I'm sure you are aware of the other influences. Like we have the social influences and then we have the individual psychology. So in terms of social influences, we're talking about culture, the environment that you're in. For example, the cultures in Asian countries are going to be very different than the cultures in European countries and also very different from the culture here in America. I haven't been talking about this as much, not because it's not relevant, but to me, it's quite obvious because we talk about it all the time. Everybody's into politics and culture nowadays, but that's the social influences. And the other influence is about the individual psychology. So we're talking about belief systems, values, attachment styles, um, childhood trauma, essentially, your background and how you were brought up and how all of that relates to dating and relationships. Now, I talk a lot about biology and evolution because again, it's usually the missing piece in our understanding about human behavior. When we hear about something from an evolutionary perspective, it tends to make sense because it's something that we're already aware of. It's not something controversial. There's a lot of common sense. What is new to people is the actual explanations that are not related to the social influences or the individual psychology. The reason why I find this stuff very interesting is because when we talk about how human evolved, what it was like in tribal days, or how human behave or how human interact with each other for thousands of years before civilization, certainly a lot of the emotions and instincts and behavior that we have they certainly make a lot of sense. So it's interesting because now we actually understand why we are the way we are. And hopefully with this channel, you have the information necessary to help you better navigate dating and relationships. Now to answer your other question, is evolutionary psychology a hard science? Not quite. It's not hard science to the same degree of math or physics because you can't really replicate results. For example, in math, um, one plus one is two or the derivative of any constant is always gonna be zero. You can prove it, you can apply experiments, and you will get the same results. Or for physics, let's say um, E equals mc squared. Again, you can do the experiment using this formula and you will get consistent results. But when it comes to evolutionary psychology, you can replicate the experiment, but you won't always get the same results. What it shows is trends. So if you look at academic studies, it's not like you're gonna find 100 people at 100% say this and zero people at 0% say this. What you can find or what you can observe is a trend. And this is true for pretty much all social sciences. There's a general preference or a general tendency for people to say this or say that. Obviously, there will be individual variations based on the social influences or the individual psychology like we talked about earlier. So it's not hard science. Like you can say just because women are hypergamous, they will leave you the moment they find a taller, richer, better looking guy. You know, we know that that's not always the case. But again, there are no hard rules that apply to all situations. They're just trends. With that said, evolutionary biology is a complete science. And I know that it's hard sometimes to kind of draw the line between evolutionary biology and evolutionary psychology. For example, in my other video about women's reproductive instinct, I talked about the concept of concealed ovulation, which is how women have evolved to conceal the ovulation so that it can cuckold their men. That is evolutionary biology. And it doesn't just apply to humans. It applies to pretty much all species on the planet. Plants, fungi, animals, all of them can be explained as to how they evolved from an evolutionary biological perspective. So evolutionary biology is a complete science. To me, in order to fully understand human behavior, it's not enough just to look at the evolutionary explanations. We're more than just biology and evolution, we have morality. I would even say that evolutionary instincts are not necessarily the strongest influence on our behavior. They're pretty strong and we probably underestimate them. But this whole argument of nature versus nurture, I think it's a bit of both. I mean, you see people acting against the instinct all the time. When was the last time you wanted to murder somebody just because they didn't go when the light turned green? They're too busy looking at their phones. You felt the urge, right? You didn't do it, but you felt it, right? No? Just me? Okay. All right, let's end it there. I hope that answered your question. If you have any other questions, leave it down in the comment section and I'll try my best to answer them. Or if they're really important, I'll make a video response. Until next time, stay curious.